want to try and make your way down here for me? All right, if you get the mic, can you introduce with your name and the major that you're studying here at UTEC? Um, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I, my name is J.C. Lewis. I'm actually from Antigua. Um, Ooh, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm not a UTEC student. I actually go to the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts. Um, I'm a fourth year BFA theater student, and my thesis is actually on colorism. We met. So my question, my literal thesis question is, how does colorism as a social construct affect the self-esteem and self-image of the darker-skinned woman in the Caribbean? And when you, when you, when you, when you, dropped, when you dropped this particular song, I mean, I had already decided that was gonna be my thesis in year one. When you dropped this song, I was like, yeah, okay, so spice on my aunt, you know. Um, yeah. Um, so that's what my whole year has been on. I'm currently working on building a 45 minute one woman show that is called the Ebony Experience. And I hope to God, if you're in Jamaica at the time and you have the opportunity, I'd really love if you could come to see it. Um, because, because my sister is 13 years younger than me and when she was born, I realized that she looked at me like I was a superhero and I didn't look at myself in that way. And so from that moment forward, I knew that I had to do something about the way or the self-loathing that happens in darker skinned women. And she called me the other day, Black History Month project, and she was very upset because her teacher would not let her do a dissertation on um, black hypocrisy. They don't 11 want us years to old. Talk about it. She, no, she did vex. She said, because she said one bad word, but it did well placed. <laughs> So she was very upset that she couldn't do it. So I really appreciate you for doing what you're doing and having this conversation because I feel like there are no forums for us to sit down and talk about this, for us to say, yo, it happens, it re it's real, and it really does affect us. People want to say that self-esteem is a self thing. Yeah, but it, it's, also, it's also very much about what's going on around you. So I really appreciate this. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Give her a round of applause. No, I'm not even sure if it was a question or a statement because I got so much from you. You've also made some good pointers and some good statements. I want to congratulate you. And I do pray that I'll be in Jamaica at that day so that I can be there. But I mean, colorism, how it affects us is most of the pointers that I've said before. Even the men, they do it to us. And we do it to each other. And society make you feel that you have to have a certain look. And so even when I put out that picture, when I was appearing to have a lighter skin. It was done specifically and solely for that reason, because I wanted to play on the minds of the people. I wanted them to feel guilty. I wanted to show them that these young girls are losing self-esteem because of you, because of the things that you say, because of how you want them to look. And that's why they bleach the skin, to put on a show and to put on this appearance, because they kill their self-esteem. And that's really why I came up with the picture to say, okay, when my black woman say me too black, is this how you want me to look? And when we have a dark skin, they make it seem like we are not beautiful. Like only the lighter skin um, people look pretty. The men do it to us all the time. The singers do it in music video. I see them start singing about melanin now all of a sudden when they weren't singing about that in the first place. And so that's when I, when I came up with the picture. That's really what it was about. Because they make you feel that if you have a dark skin, that you're not beautiful. I want to also raise the point where um, I think it's Kendall Jenner. She did a photo shoot in Vogue magazine. And she was trying to sport an Afro hair. And a lot of you know, African-American and other you know, black people, we, they got upset because of the mere fact that I see it the same way, is as if they want to erase or feature. So they gave Kendall Jenner that photo shoot. Instead of getting an actual black girl, they gave her the Afro hair. So things like that is what will continue to happen if we don't start to speak up about it. So I thank you so much on that initiative. Anybody else? There's a gentleman here. You wanna try and make your way down? Or let's see if we can pass Everybody. I am Paul Harris, a student at UTEC studying accounting. I, you accounting. mentioned, right, accounting. <laughs> <laughs> you made mention about dating earlier. So I wanted to yeah. ask, what are your views on interracial dating? And not just dating someone who is lighter than you, 
but dating those who enslaved us. Dating outside of our race. Um, black hypocrisy and the movement, it's about demolishing um, people who degrade each other. Um, for me, it's to each to their own. I'm not about to say I think black women should only date black men and black men should only date black women. That's not fair. That's not what it's about. And not because I'm of a darker complexion. The movement is not about let us fight against the lighter complexion. And so even if you step outside of your race, for me it's just to each his own. I'm, I'm not here to say discriminate against anyone and colorism is not about racism either. It's also a difference because racism is when another race is fighting against another race. Colorism is with when your own is fighting against your own. So for me, to each his own, and I'm not about to say, date your own race. I'm not that type of person. Love is, oh, I don't want to go there. It will take you anywhere. <laughs> but love will take you anywhere. So if you want to date a lighter skin or a darker skin, to each his own. That's really not what the movement is about. So for me, you know, you can date outside of your race. Another question or a speech. It's not about just questions. What I want it to be more about, you want to say something? Who has the mic? I, I want it. us Who to be able to make your voices be heard. Someone over here. Make your voices be heard. Let us leave here today and say, this is what we can do to stop this. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tamika Clooney, and my major is tourism management. <laughs> I really want to congratulate you on what you're doing because I've grown up with close persons every time like an advertisement come on and a black person there she pretty but she black and I'm like she, you're so pretty for a black girl that's yeah. the popular saying yeah. yeah and like them shut down the person and it's really 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 very sad and I look on I really want to tell you to keep pushing on this movement because it's very, very good. Because the psyche of us growing up with this black concept is very, very, very bad. And you're so beautiful. And I love how you embrace your color. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't even see you. Here's another black, beautiful sister right in front here Money. in our black hypocrisy t Thank you so much. I met her I met her. Was it here we did the, the video? Oh, I was at Edna Manley and I saw her. And I was like, come here, you're so pretty. I want you in my video. And I just give her the tea. And you still have the t-shirt. Thank you for coming. You look here. You know I'm going to start walking all the way up here. I want the people that... Where's the mic? Where's the microphone? I'm going to take it and I'm going to keep going all the way up. Because I want everybody's voices to be heard. I'm coming all the way up. Who's, who has the mic? Go ahead. You can stand. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Suave Allen. Wait, um, go ahead now. My name is Suave Allen. I'm majoring in midwifery. So, as you said earlier, um, you know, this whole melanin magic, black girl power, when I was in high school, it wasn't a thing. It used to be, oh, you're so pretty for a black girl, don't bleach your skin. But yet, I was treated a certain way. I was spoken to a certain way. Yes. And if I had an argument with someone at school, it's... You would get the blame. Yes. <laughs> you're too black. You know, fair go on, so you're too black. And it's just like, okay. Now this whole melanin thing is going on. And I had people around me to encourage me. Because, yes, it has a lot to do with self-esteem. Yes. But you have people around you who will draw you down. They will yes. let, they'll say things to Feel you. Feel the self-esteem. And it will affect you. Definitely. And I had to have my sisters who look just like me, family members, encourage me and remind me that, that yes, you I are beautiful. Relate. And you are and beautiful. And then when I realized in myself that, yes, yes, I am beautiful, 
no one could draw me down, nobody at all. So when, so now the same people who would draw me down in high school, they're like, oh my Them God. see you now. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yes. No. Yes. You were one of those people who helped to bring me down. I don't want you to give me a compliment. It's okay. Thank you. Thank but you I very much. Fine. Thank you. Yes. You have to uplift each other. And you have to remember that, yes, it has a lot to do with self-esteem, but the words we say, the things words that we powerful. do, affect people. And we yes. must know that. Encourage our black women, our dark skin girls. Encourage them every day, and they will feel as special as they are. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Continue doing what you're doing. So proud to hear that. I'm coming all the way up with the mic, because I want to hear from Udo in the back. OK, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So, my name is Terian. I am in the BCAT program here. <laughs> Luckily, I'm here and I'm doing my media project on the melanin magic. And my thing is, that a lot of, although a lot of females face this black, keep the mic on. Yeah, although we all go through the, com the the issues with your complexion and all, as females, we also neglect to see that males too face this. Yes, problem. definitely. And we as females do force them into it because we're like, I want a light skin nigga. I don't want no dark skin nigga. So I am asking you, how do you, how will you incorporate? males into the black hypocrisy movement? I mean, how I would incorporate males into the black hypocrisy movement. If you notice when I started my speech, I said it can also be reversed. And <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of men will also be affected. Nursing. Okay. Let me explain something to you. If you take this uniform off, people see you as a black man. They see a thief. They see somebody that is poor. They see someone that is of a lesser class. Automatically, signals go off. It is not until you probably have on your doctor uniform or your whatever, whatever, say, oh. But people look down on black people immediately because they, they notice the color of your skin. And so you also will be affected. Don't think it's just a girl thing. People will look down on you. I already spoke about what will happen at workplaces when you leave and when you have certain things, they will judge you because they might say, Lord, him not fit fit or him too dark. But even police are kill off the black people them. Not because they want to, but them see them as signal go off because them just see black people as this aggri aggressive, arrogant person and them just automatically. I can also explain something to you. When I'm overseas and I go into a store, if it's an iron store um, with expensive things, they don't know who I am, they don't know I'm a celebrity. The moment I walk in there, security start watch me because I'm of a dark skin. So the alarm go off, you're supposed to be poor or you're supposed to be a thief or whatever. So that also will affect black men. It's not only going to affect just women. I just wanted to say that to you so that you can know that we women, we're not in this alone. You also will be affected in colorism. All right? So, yeah, the man them in it too, definitely. Anybody else wants the mic? All the way to the back. Okay, who has it? All right, let's go up and come back round. So we can more want to hear from the people that are at the back, all the way to the top. All right, hand it to her. <laughs> majority of my majority of my family members are light skinned My all my majority of my last week, so I know it is real. Somebody told me that brown women are preferred, and if I do a survey, it is true. And though it was an innocent conversation, it is true. <laughs> Don't shy away. Go ahead. We want to hear. Sorry. Yeah. Um, what I am challenging you to do, normally when I come to school, I normally catch my hair in a bun and then put some Afro kinky on it to give it a little length. But I saw your ad on social media that you were coming to UTEC and you were going to speak on 
black hypocrisy. Thank you for starting the conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I got up and I said, I'm not going to put on this Afro kinky on my hair today. I'm going All to right, wear round of applause. I was talking about that. <laughs> I am going to wear my Afro today and I'm going to walk confidently and I'm going to be a part of this conversation today. I am asking you, you have the platform. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm very emotional. I'm sorry. 